Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to High Point Market. Uh, I, t I said this morning that uh, market's an outdoor sport, so um, uh, hopefully you are uh, you come prepared. But uh, I think the sun is going to come out later, and it's going to be a great day. So um, thank you for uh, joining us here in the Learning Center here at Universal. Uh, we do a number of educational events throughout the week of market. We have, um, I think, 15 over five days. Uh, we do record them all, so if you uh, miss anything, if you signed up for something, uh, we will send you an email with all the recordings. So, um, but we are thrilled to have Melissa Galt back. I, I asked Melissa, I said, "Do you think how are we going to do this morning? You know, with the weather?" But um, uh, you guys, you come in droves. So, um, thank you. Um, we would definitely encourage you to experience uh, the showroom if you've not been in the building before. It's a massive space. It's 115,000 square feet. Um, just check in at the front desk. They'll be happy to send you on your way. Um, we also, uh, we tag everything in the building. We have these little scanners. So if you are interested in shopping, which we would also encourage, um, you can scan everything that you see that you like. And then when you check out, just hand the scanner back to the front desk. You get an email with everything that you scan. It contains pricing. It lets you know if it's in stock or on sale, all that. So uh, we have a new collection on floor three with Coastal Living called Weekender that we're really excited about. And then floor three also contains um, the rest of what we have with Coastal Living, including outdoor, which is in stock. Uh, floor two contains some in-stock looks with Miranda Kerr Home. And then uh, the first floor down here, we have our special order upholstery, uh, which is made domestically in Conover, North Carolina, shipping in six to eight weeks. So please take a look at that. And then we also have the designer's lounge here on the first floor. We have a number of activations happening there throughout the week. Uh, we have some bubbles mixologist sessions this afternoon, which should be fun. Uh, and there is the beauty bar as well. So if you need a hair touch up before you hit the town tonight, uh, based on the weather, uh, good opportunity to uh, to take advantage of that. And there's also some really fun uh, swag bags in there for the first 400 visitors uh, from Rue Magazine. So again, lots happening here at Universal, and we're just so happy to have everybody uh, back for market. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Melissa. Melissa, of course, uh, brings just a ton of experience and insight as a designer, as a business coach, and always offers some great perspectives. So we're thrilled to have you back. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. How many people here have heard me speak before? Let me see a show of hands. Okay, not enough of you, clearly. <laughs> All right. If you are not following the podcast, if you are not following me on Instagram, please do, because it's a great place to pick up instant strategy, instant tips, incredibly relevant that you can apply immediately to your business. That's why I do everything that I do. It's for you guys, okay? I've spent 30 years in the field as a designer and I now am far more interested in the business and marketing of design than in doing design for clients. And I wrapped up my last project in the last couple of months. Unless somebody walks in my door and says, Melissa, carte blanche, desert modern, no deadline. I'm not interested. <laughs> and since I'm not marketing in Scottsdale, Arizona, where I live, I don't think that's going to happen. So you guys are going to have me for a good many years to come. I do want you to write down your questions so none of them get missed. I will likely get to the answers before the end of this presentation. And we do have a meetup following in the Designer's Lounge where you can ask me anything you want, whether it's rates and fees related or any other topic. Our business is pretty crazy and everything is interconnected with everything else. I am fortunate enough to have a number of my clients in the room with me here today, which thrills me no end. And I may actually give a shout out to him at some point during this event. So I want to dive into this. 20% of today's homeowners are investing in interior design. That is a huge number. Huge. Here's what I need you to be aware of. Guess what? Probably less than 10% of those are actually the affluent clients that you all want to work with. A lot of these are from the HGTV era the HGTV mindset, and they're like, oh, look, I'll just watch an HGTV show and I'm going to hire a designer and she's going to consult with me or he's going to consult with me. That's not the kind of projects you want, okay? So you want to be aware that the demand for design is way, way up, but you must be incredibly selective in the clientele that you take on. Those of you standing in the back, your tootsies are going to kill you in a little bit. Come on down front, sit on the floor. We don't mind. It's super comfortable. We're used to having floor folks. We love it, okay? 
So value-based fees are incredibly important. I call them value-based fees for a very specific reason. Yes, they're flat. Yes, they're fixed. Sometimes they're not so flat. Sometimes they're fluffy and they grow with the project. And I'll share that with you too. But what I really want you to understand is this is about the value of the outcome of design. Would all of you agree with me? And if you don't agree, you can leave. It's okay. Nobody's going to do that. Would you all agree with me that design is a short-term investment with a very long-term ROI? Our ROI is 15 and 20 years. Clients are flipping their luxury car or their not-so-luxury car three times in that time frame, right? So if we were getting royalties, wouldn't this be cool? Every year you get a check from your past clients for the year's worth of enjoyment? Wouldn't that be epic? Oh my God, passive revenue. Here I come. Okay. I don't think the industry is going to go for that. I don't think the clients are going to go for that. So instead, what I'm going to teach you here today is how to get paid for the value of the outcome, not your time that it took to get there because of that. Because there are designers in this room that work fast. There are the designers in this room that work slowly. I always worked fast. So hourly was a massive trap for me. And I always had a much higher hourly rate than the other designers around me at the time. I have designers telling me, oh, Melissa, I'm at 150 an hour. And I'm like, uh, I was there 20 years ago. Hmm. So, and I was in Atlanta. I wasn't in LA. I wasn't in Manhattan. And the kids coming out of school today, a lot of them are getting 125 an hour. Is anybody going to raise their rates after what I just said? Yeah. Yeah. You've been out of school a little while. You don't have to have gone to school. You've stepped in from another field. That's awesome. I don't want you to bury your history. I want you to leverage it. Okay. So value-based fees work for everything. I get this question a lot. They work for finishes, fixtures, and lighting, remodeling or renovation, new build, full furnishings, a combination thereof. There's nothing they don't work for. When you move to flat and fixed fees, value-based fees, you must eliminate the mention or reference of hourly from your website, from your conversations, from your contracts. You cannot mix these. It will backfire very badly because they will try to do reverse math on you if they start hearing an hourly fee, and that can be a real problem. So Andrea is a great case in point. Uh, she's a designer out of California. We started working together in 2020. Under lockdown, she quadrupled her revenues. Coolest thing ever. She also went from a team of one to a team of five. But Andrea's very first flat fee project was a remodel. It was with a VIP with Zoom, who also took off during that time period. And she said, oh, Melissa, I'm going to go in at 750 a square foot. I said, what? I said, whoa, 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 hang on, Andrea. I said, double that. And she goes, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. I said, okay, slow down. It's okay. I got gotcha. you. Can you get to 1350 for me? She did. She went in quaking. Her stomach was in knots. She got in front of the client. She gave him the fee. It was $46,000. And the only question he asked her was what was the basis for the fee? And she said, oh, 1350 a square foot. Whipped out his checkbook, wrote a check. I was like, oh, we left money on the table. Oh. But she couldn't have gone any higher. She literally could not have gone any higher. Her stomach was a knot. She was breaking a sweat. The first time you do this, that's likely to happen. You have to be prepared for that. If you keep playing the game you're playing, you're never going to go beyond the limitations that you've got up here. As much as anything else, while I can teach you all of this, you've got to release your limiting beliefs about what's possible. And you've got to remember that your clients are in a different income bracket than you are. And what you feel is like, oh, Melissa, that's a big number, is not a big number to them. It's not. He just whipped out his checkbook and wrote a check. It's not a big deal. Okay? Very important. I doubled it basically from her original. I couldn't get her clear to 1550, but, you know, I got her as high as I could now today. She's a whole different designer, a whole different designer. And that's what makes the difference. So value-based fees deliver confidence, control, and the compensation that you deserve. You will get confident with these fees. They're going to be uncomfortable in the beginning. Your brain is going to fight you. 
We all have an amygdala in the back of our brain. And that brain is going to fight you because it likes pattern and familiarity. It does not discern healthy pattern, profitable pattern, from unhealthy pattern, unprofitable pattern. It just goes pattern, 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 pattern. And it doesn't want you to change. So what you're going to learn is how to truly value design and your services and priceless talent because all of you are here with those gifts. Five phrases. I'm known as the word wizard to a lot of my clients. <laughs> so I'm going to share some phrases with you that will help you in this. How to detail design deliverables. Design deliverables are the cornerstone of being effective with value-based fees. If you do not use effective design deliverables, you will lose your shirt. I guarantee it. I've been there and I did that. And I don't want you to have to go there and do it. Has anybody here tried flat fees and lost their shirt? Let me see a show of hands. Yeah. Uncomfortable stuff. Okay. Believe me, there's others in here who have, they just didn't raise their hand. <laughs> My hand is up too. Okay. Um, and four proven formulas to calculate value-based fees so you don't lose money. But you will lose money if you don't use deliverables. So what's your true value? How many of you realize that you're wearing a lot more hats than just designer? I don't even have designer on the list here. Check out this list. This is only 18 of our 36 hats. And we're only getting paid for one hat. Well, frankly, I think we deserve to be paid for more than one hat. So next time you're in front of a client, and you're thinking, oh, wow, this is a lot. How can I ask for this much? You go, hang on. How many hats am I wearing today? Because if I got paid for all my hats, I'd be making a whole lot more money, eh? Okay. I mean, I know a lot of you are project managers, contractors, color experts, psychologists, psychic. Anybody here a psychic? Trying to read your client's minds or worse, you're trying to read the contractor's mind. That's a very dangerous place to play. Okay. Peacemaker. How many of us have kept clients together? Yeah. Okay. Furniture designer, space planner, fabric magician, mood maker, lighting designer, purchasing agent, that was where I came into the field because I have a degree from Cornell in hospitality management and I dove into purchasing. And for five years, every eight months, I moved cities, states, companies climbing the ladder in purchasing in hotels. It was epic. And then I was bored out of my gourd. I was the turnaround agent. I turned around every department, every department, every department, but I didn't want to stick around. So sourcing is my superpower. Hmm. That's what I'm tackling tomorrow. Team leader, time management ninja. If you're not a time management ninja, there's hope for you yet. Don't you worry. We're not covering it today. Resource professional, that's tomorrow. Creative genius, marketing maverick. And this is just 18. I got 18 more, okay? Don't worry, I'm not going to share them. But I, I want you to remember, every time you get uncomfortable with your fees, go, hang on. How many hats did Melissa say I was wearing? And how many hats are in this project? So you've got six design value factors, your education, your experience, your talent, your resources, your team, and your hats. When I say education, something's ringing. I don't know what that is. When I say education, it doesn't have to be design education. Any education you have counts. School of Hard Knocks counts. Please don't discount yourself. That's not cool. All right, so here's what I really want you to think about for a moment. How many of you are trying to sell sofas and chairs and tables and things like that? Let me see a show of hands. Okay, come on. There's more of you than that that are trying to sell this stuff. I want you to stop doing that. Because instead, I want you to sell the place to relax, refresh, and recharge. I want you to sell the place to laugh and le learn. I want you to sell a place for romance and connection. When you design a glorious primary suite... Don't make it about the bed. Don't make it about the night table. Don't make it about the chair. Don't make it about the bedding. Make it about the impact it will have on your client's life. Paint the picture for them. I was talking to one of my designers recently about selling a sectional. And she's like, I don't think they're going to go for it, Melissa. And I said, well, no, they're not if you're selling a sectional. But if you're selling their spot for Friday night date night where they can stretch out and they've got a little table next to them with a favorite bottle of red wine, and popcorn, and the kids are on a play date. You have just sold that sectional, trust me. Okay? Now, I didn't even mention the sectional, did I? But they're like, I want that room. I want that room. I want that date night. So that's what you've got to look at. You've got to paint the picture. You've got to romance it. It makes all the difference in the world. A place to entertain is better than a dining room, don't you think? They're like, well, we, we need a place to entertain. Well, let me turn your dining room into that place. And here's how we're going to do it. 
You've got to learn to romance it. Makes all the difference in the world. Your value increases every day. Every seminar you're in, every training you take, every podcast you listen to, every new resource, every new team member, every new project, every new client. So isn't it time your fees kept up? Let me see a show of hands. How many people have raised their rates in the last 12 months? Okay, that's great. I commend you. What are the rest of you doing? Your value's increased. Your rates aren't keeping up. That's a problem, okay? Transparency builds trust. I am huge on transparency with clients. I just find it much simpler. And designers have mixed feelings about it. But if you ever breach a client's trust, whether it's deliberate or accidental, it's darn near impossible to get it back. So you're better off being transparent. And integrity builds business. Wouldn't you agree? Bless you. So I have tried it all. I've tried flat fees, square foot, hourly exclusively. Oh, let me digress for just a quick moment. Hourly exclusively. Dumbest thing I ever did. First five years of my business. I get this very exciting, very high-flying entrepreneurial client. And he looked at my agreement and he said, um, this looks fine, but Melissa, I'm not going to pay you for, you know, furnishings in terms of I'm not going to pay a fee on top. And I was like, hmm, okay. And he said, I'll pay an hourly. You pick a different hourly, like double your hourly, whatever you want to do. So in my brilliance of five years in the field, I said, fine, I'll, I'll double my hourly. Well, our first time out of the gate, we went to ADAC, Atlanta Decorative Arts Center, and we went to Ann Sachs Tile. And this client in 90 minutes, invested, listen to my language, my language is everything, invested $80,000, and I made $450. Oh, okay. Now, never again, minimum I would ever take as a procurement management fee, I don't call it a markup ever. A procurement management fee is 15%, and that's only with somebody who I'm going to have a much higher design fee with. And I don't work hourly anymore either. But I only doubled my, I probably should have quintupled my hourly. And even then it wouldn't have made sense. And I could have called it a handling fee. I didn't have the word procurement management at the time. So language is everything. It positions everything. And that really makes a difference. Please don't ever go exclusively hourly. Silliest thing in the world to do. It really is. Um, and I've done project cost. I love that one. My project cost one was coming up and then combination method. So I've done all of these. My design business has been where I experiment so you don't have to. I don't guinea pig with my designers. I don't think that's appropriate. Okay. None of this is fluff. All of this is proven, tried and tested. And it's on everything in our business. Absolutely everything. So I get to be here and do this. I love doing this. And I love Universal. They have the best training room in the whole of High Point Market. They really do. And for those of you curious, I do have some famous dead relatives, okay? So my mom is over there um, on the far left or right, depending on whether you're looking from my viewpoint or your viewpoint. Some of you may know her from the Ten Commandments. So if you remember the gorgeous Egyptian princess who's in love with Moses but forced to marry Ramses, and she's on the royal barge, and Moses comes up dripping from the mud, and she goes, Moses, Moses, Moses. That's my mother. I mean, I grew up with a real-life drama queen. I truly did. And then the middle guy, well, that's my great-granddad, Frank Lloyd Wright. Some of you may know that name. And then the lady over here on the end, anybody recognize that one? Edith Hedge, my godmother. Okay, mom was in film, so obviously she knew Aunt Edie, and they got together, and she made her my godmother. Super cool. So it... You know, design really is in my DNA. I'm super lucky, but I'm a much better business person than great-grandfather was. It's not a good businessman at all. And this, I share this with you because I want you to design your life to fuel your business. That's what I do with my life to fuel my business. So those of you that are liking wine and you're like going to the free wine tasting down at the corner shop, no, 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 stop it. Okay, you need to go to the 250, the 1500 or the $15,000 wine week in Naples because you land one client out of that wine week and you have just made back that investment. But do the things that you love at the next levels to attract wonderful clients beyond word of mouth. I have designers who get clients from going to boat shows, who get them from going to Pilates and bar classes. There's so many cool ways you can get clients. 
rather than word of mouth because it's not reliable. One size does not fit all. Every designer I work with is unique and your firms and your businesses are as unique as you are. And the phrases to sell value-based fees. I don't like to tell clients to spoil themselves. I don't think that's a good idea. Most clients will resist that. But when I put them in a place of deserving, you deserve the comfort style and functionality that this transformation will deliver. You deserve, put them in a place of deserving. My gosh, look at how much you've accomplished. But for you, the house and the kids wouldn't even be here. And they're like, you know, you're right. We do deserve this, okay? You'll be enjoying this design transformation for the next 15 to 20 years. And if you sell your home, you get your ROI out of the remodel and take the furnishings we chose for you to your new place. Because you know what furnishings are? Movable money and flexible dollars. Movable money and flexible dollars. Yes, it's a sticky note. Write it down. You don't have to give me credit. Okay? Flat fees eliminate the surprises of hourly design and give us more creative focus to deliver a uniquely used solution. If you've been working with hourly clients, they may push back because they may think they're paying more. Between you, me, and a fence post, they are. But we don't want them to know that because they are paying based on the outcome instead of your time. Unless each one of you had an hourly rate of $1,500 to $2,500, you are vastly undervalued, vastly undervalued. So value-based fees provide a powerful path for you to manage your interior investment. They know when they're going to be paying, what the schedule is, and it's well set and organized. It avoids this surprise of, well, this month's 10000 and next month's 30000 and the next month is 5000 and it's very confusing, and the client's like, oh, I can't manage this. It also helps you manage your cash flow. And fixed fees means fewer invoices and avoids the typical overwhelm of design details. We've got all of those covered and want you to enjoy the journey. Fewer invoices is less work for you. And your invoices when you're working with flat fees are a lump sum. You don't have to spend days going through and detailing the hours. Or worse yet, how many of you go back and correct them? And you start discounting and deducting. Yeah, seeing some nods around this room. Stop it. Please stop it. And if you're stuck with hourly and you're determined you're going to ignore me at today's presentation and you're going to go off and do hourly after this, then please add a line item that says project communication because that's going to cover all the time in phone, text, and email between you and the client, you and the contractor, you and the builder, you and the vendors, you and the installers, you and the workrooms. And hourly, I never build less than 30-minute increments. Never. And in a case of project communication, I would just kind of look and go, hmm, I'm thinking that's five hours this week, or hmm, I'm thinking that's 10 hours. I didn't get exact about it, and I never got pushed back. Never got pushed back. Because there's all the time in the shower I'm thinking about their project. I'm dreaming about their project. I'm waking up at 2 a.m. on their project. I'm at a kid's event, and it's a project. We don't build for all of that, right? So we got to turn that around. Got to turn that around. Are these phrases helpful? Okay, excellent. Glad to hear that. Okay, so you are one of a kind. Adapt your fees to your projects and your clients. I will often give clients a choice, not always, of fee A or fee B. You never give more than, one, more than two choices. Don't ever give three. Not in the digital age. It's too much. Too much, too much, too much. Sometimes I don't give a choice at all and it's fine. Um, find what fits you. Don't rely on what someone else is doing. You're going to meet a lot of really wonderful new friends here at Market, and I want you to, but I want you being careful about taking what they're doing in their business and applying it to yours because their business isn't like yours. You're only seeing a snapshot. Same thing applies to Facebook. If you're relying on Facebook for your source of reference, ooh, be very careful. And there's a lot of unqualified, untested, unproven advice out there, okay? Um, and always be your best you. So don't lose your shirt. Precise deliverables really matter. This little disclaimer clause is vital at the bottom of your deliverables in your letter of agreement. Additions and changes require a change order and additional fees. That's like your get out of jail free card. If you forget that, you are on the hook. Do not forget that. That changes everything. So here's an example of deliverables. Now, I have a success guide on the postcards that you all got. 
that has a much more thorough list of deliverables. These are shortened for slide purposes. So you definitely want to get the downloads. But you notice I have numbers in front of everything. That is critical. I've actually worked with a couple of my designers and they've handed back their deliverables list and say, hey, Melissa, can you review my deliverables? I'm like, oh, where are the numbers? They put all, all floor plans. I'm like, no, 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 please don't do that. Because I need, it's two floor plans per room. You could say three floor, if you want to say five floor plans per room, but that's your choice. It's your choice. If you just say all, the client say, you know, Melissa, I think we'd like three more floor plans for this room. Melissa, I think we'd like another floor plan for this room over here. And you've already done two for each room. So if they want more and you've, and you've spelled it out, then additional fees and a change order. Okay? You're paid for it. But if you put the word all up there, you're on the hook. You're on the hook. Don't do it. Um, now, this might not look exactly like yours, Will, but 10 client meetings in the home. Do you see what I did there? Up to 90 minutes each. How many of you have lost a half a day or even a day sometimes with these meetings and you're thinking, I'm going to be gone for 90 minutes. You know, five hours later, you're finally back in your office. No, 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 no. That doesn't have to happen. Now, the first meeting goes over. All right, we let that ride. But we mention it to the client. We mention it to the builder. We mention to whomever we need to mention it to. If they're going to do it again, change order, additional fees. Now, you can build in, you can say up to three hours, but you know, honest to goodness, no client has that kind of focus. Clients are usually tapped at 30 minutes to an hour. They'll hang in there with you. They will. They'll make it look good, but they, they're gone. They're gone. You have to determine with your individual clients what their capacity is. So the project I just finished up, lovely guy, retired engineer, super nice, great friend of a friend sort of thing. His capacity was no more than one or two rooms in a Zoom meeting. He lived in Atlanta. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I learned that very quickly. And I was like, okay, no problem. Now, I did all the rooms at once. But I said, okay, Ted, let's meet on Monday for these two, Wednesday for these two, Friday for these two. Would I have rather done it all at once? Yeah. But he didn't have the capacity. And I want the decisions in the meeting I don't want them wandering off and saying, oh, we'll get back to you. No, that's going to break my timeline. You, okay? I don't like broken timelines. So this is really important. Now, I'll give you another one here. This is a design decorate. There's no remodel in here. It's similar. It's missing, you know, the construction documents, five client meetings in home, one big reveal with full styling and installation. I go all the way to the big reveal. If you don't want to call it a big reveal, you can call it whatever you want. I think big reveal sounds a lot sexier than just an installation. Okay? Your language is everything. And I say full styling instead of, um, you know, last minute touches. You know, it's, it's, it's all strategic. It's all strategic. But this is really important. And this is tip of the iceberg compared to what I gave you in the success guide. So you got that coming. So must have for all formulas. These are the ingredients that I need. I had a full day event with 12 designers on Thursday this week here in High Point. And I gave them each the opportunity to bring this to me. One of the gals did. And it took me no more than 15 minutes to run through numbers on a particular project where she'd given me all this information. This does not take a long time to calculate. That's the beautiful part. Once you know the formulas, and I run two to three formulas, a minimum two, on everything because I want to have a check balance. That's really important. So the client's planned interior investment. How many of you are getting that? Ooh, like two hands, four hands going up. That's not good. Five. Excellent. I knew you would. <laughs> okay. So this was the, the whole place where her situation unraveled. Okay. When she gave me the number, she said, but I knew it wasn't high enough. And then she gave me the rooms and I said, no, the number wasn't high enough. Did you have a conversation with the client to explain that for what they wanted to achieve, their planned investment, listen to my words again, I do not use the B word, their planned investment was not going to get them there. They had a choice. Are they willing to step into a range that is increased from that? In your experience, you know, I, if it were me, I would say, so, you know, in my experience, your planned investment is not going to get you everything you want. 
you would be looking more realistically at 180 to 250. Is that a range you can play in? Is that a range you're willing to invest in? And then I get quiet and let them think about it. Now they're going to do one of three things. They're going to go 180. Okay. So they're not a fit. I'm out of there. I'm like, you know, I'm probably not the right firm for you. Let me give you three other firms in the local area. You can explore them. And then I have a little um, disclaimer that goes with that email that says, we cannot refer nor recommend, explore at your own risk. Or, or they'll say, oh, you know, um, hmm, I, I think we can, we can probably do up to 200. Okay. Okay. We can, we can talk about that. Um, or they might, this is so fun when they do this. Oh my goodness, it doesn't happen very often. But every once in a while they go, we've got 400. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so you kind of want to look at it um, in terms of you got to have the conversations. Don't be afraid of it. Okay, if you're not willing to be the voice of truth and the expert in the room, then I got two unqualified people sitting there, the client and you. It's not working very well. The client is not qualified to do this. Now, there are times a client will not give you a number. I know, I know, I hear this a lot. So then you step forward and you say, in my experience, I expect this to be an investment of, you know, 250 to 350, 500 to 600, 50,000 to 75,000. The numbers can be all over the board. I usually like 50 to 100K ranges, unless I'm talking a really large project, a new build, something like that, then it's, I'm going to go much wider ranges, probably a 250 range or something like that. So you really have to be able to have those conversations. If you are not getting that piece of information, everything will unravel because you will provide a proposal that has numbers they didn't expect. They will have sticker shock and they will not recover and you will not have the project and you will have just wasted your time putting together a proposal. Do not put together a proposal if you don't have their number. If you haven't had a conversation about money, please don't do this. You're wasting your time. It falls apart every time. Anybody had this happen? Uh, yeah. Nobody wants to raise their hand. A lot of nodded heads. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. So value of the home by square foot. That's super easy. Zillow, realtor.com. The Zestimate. Yeah, that's super helpful. Square footage of the project. You should have a clue. It doesn't have to be exact. You can usually get it from Zillow, realtor.com. If it's a room by room, don't bother with that. You don't need it. I'm going to give you a room by room ranges of numbers you can do. But if you're doing a whole floor, if you're doing two stories, if you're doing the whole home, if you're doing a new build, something of that, you need square foot. Okay. List of rooms if you're not addressing all spaces. So it just helps to have all of these things because then I can go to work with the numbers and it can take me 15 minutes and out they pop. And then we discuss can you get these out of your mouth? Can you put them into an agreement without cringing and melting down in front of your client? Um, always apply minimum two formulas. That really makes a difference. So percent of project cost. I love, love, love this one. Yes, that is me. Um, it's kind of weird to have me on the screen and be here in person, but we're making it work. So spring of 2011, I had a client who found me, like called me. I was like, I picked up the phone and she's like, you know, I'd sent in a request from your website form and I never got a response. I'm like, oh my gosh, turned out to be a pretty amazing client. And she had a 2,500 square foot townhome and she originally was planning to do just the primary suite and the kitchen. Well, in the first meeting, we already expanded it significantly from there and we decided we would do the first two levels. We weren't going to do the basement level and I work in 90 day timeframes. I also at the time was able to be my own GC on this. I can't technically do that anymore in Atlanta. The laws have changed, which explains why I'm able to meet my deadlines. Because if somebody misbehaves on one of my projects, they're out and I replace them very quickly. I don't have any time for shenanigans with contractors. It just doesn't work for me. So I had an agreement with her. I said 30% across the board, all labor and all product. So I didn't have a separate procurement because I was already getting that. It was incredibly easy to bill, and the project went from 70K to half a million dollars in 90 days. At the 60-day mark, she said, could we do the basement too? I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'm like, you're insane, Melissa. And I did her landscaping. So now here's the funny part. 
a lot of you like to put limitations on your clients. And you're like, well, they'll never invest that. The house not worth that much. The town it was worth two fifty. <laughs> but she could have gone off and bought a multi million dollar home. She had built a tech company with a partner and sold it. She wanted to live in the townhome that her mother had had. It had not been updated for thirty years. We had to go down to the studs and back up. And it was on a golf course. It was a conscious, deliberate decision on her part. When she walked in the door for me to do a walkthrough with dirt on my face and plants under my fingernails, <laughs> I was mortified. She had dropped 40 pounds. She took the opportunity while I was transforming her home to transform her physical self. That is so powerful. We have this opportunity where we are impacting clients at a core level. And we are creating these moments of massive change in their lives. And it, it's just so exciting when that happens. And so the money, it's the transformation's priceless. Now, when she said yes to the 30%, it was way too fast. I was like, oh, I could have gone for 35. I might could have gone for 40. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. It was still a winner of a project because of the growth in the project. And the client was just a dream to work with. And her testimonial to me, without even asking, was, Melissa, you've ruined me for five-star hotels. I no longer want to travel. I want to stay home. I love my home that much. Yeah, pretty cool. So... That's percent of project cost. I love it. It only works when you're really fully in charge and you have access to all the numbers. And I did, and I was running it. Some of you are design build in this room and that will work. It will work. So it's clean and simple. It mirrors architects, builders, and contractors. Here is the problem. Those little monkeys, and I mean that in the most endearing sense of builders and contractors, and they like to get in our faces about our rates and fees, don't they? Anybody had that experience? Wow, that's not cool. I don't get in their face about theirs. And so if they say to you ever, well, you can't charge that much. I look at them and I say, you know, you have your percent on a much higher number. We have a higher percent on a much smaller number. And I really prefer it if you keep your rates to yourself and I'll keep my rates to myself because I run my practice my way and you run your practice your way. And I try to be really nice about it, but boy, that unhinges me completely because it is none of their business. And I had a wonderful designer who was talking with clients about doing a two year new build construction. And she had worked it out that her fee was gonna be 150K, which for two years is very respectable and the number of hours and how many times she'd be on the job site and all these sorts of things. The builder, without her permission or having conversation with her, turned to the clients and said, yeah, I think the uh, designer's gonna charge 25K. Well, you can imagine what happened when the designer heard that she could not come back after it. And she, I would not have, coached her to do what she did, which was just kind of give up and look at the client and say, well, you can go check with another designer. I would have sat down and educated them into the value of what she's doing. And that would have probably rescued the whole situation and explained why the builder was saying what he said and he didn't understand, blah, blah, blah. So there's a place of education in our industry that is desperately needed. And sometimes you all have to be the ones doing that. Um, there is more space up here in the front if you want to come sit because I know it can get really old to stand in the back like that. This does require a minimum project size. Minimum project size, and it's not finite for the client. So percentage of project costs, it's so easy. Look at how easy this is to calculate. Oh my gosh. I don't do complex math. Um, there's a bunch of math I never even took. I can't remember what it's called. Started with an A. was an algebra. I took algebra. Trigonometry. That's the stuff I never took. See, you don't need it anymore. It's silly. But this is basic math, all right? It's a square foot method. Anna, um, love working with Anna, totally fun, in Milwaukee. And this was her first flat fee project. Now, Anna gave me the 4,800 square feet, and we talked about 
you know, 2025. And she goes, well, 20, I'm, I'm, I'm good if it's, you know, 20. And I said, well, hang on a minute, Anna. Because she was coming in around 80,000. I'm like, Anna, for what you're doing, I saw the scope of work. I said, for what you're doing, I think you need 25 a square foot. So she went to 120, presented the client, no pushback whatsoever. I'm like, oh, really? We could have gone more? Because <laughs> um, I look for that at least a pause. Doesn't have to be a big reaction, just a pause. Maybe a, really? That's what it's going to take? Or a sharp intake of breath. Some indication that it's not completely okay for them. But Anna was like, okay. And she doesn't have any problem with numbers. She doesn't have limiting beliefs. It's really fantastic. And it's very rare. Uh, and she got it first time out of the gate. So now they're going to be moving all of their projects to this methodology because it's so much simpler. You will recapture five to eight hours a week without having to do the complicated hourly invoices. Now, you still may want to track time just for your own purposes internally, but you don't have to track it the way you do for invoicing, okay? And you're never spending those extra hours going back over the invoices and what you think is correcting and I think is diminishing your value. So that's important. Um, and she knows her cash flow. That's super fun. Now, I say it's $3 to 35 square feet. It could be 55 a square foot. It could be 75 a square foot. There's no limits to this, okay? But these are the average that I'm generally working. I don't go as low as three. I, my lowest is usually $10 a square foot, and that's finishes, fixtures, and lighting. And it, one of my designers had a 9,400 square foot home, and she said, Melissa, all I'm doing is finishes, fixtures, and lighting. I said, that's a big deal. Don't put all I'm doing in front of it. That's a big deal. And I said, you got a choice between seven and ten dollars. She went after ten dollars and she got it. Ninety four thousand dollars for finishes, fixtures, and lighting. Anybody else kind of want that? Yeah. Kind of cool, huh? Um, so then you go up from there, adding and remodeling. If there's remodeling, there may not be remodeling, and then adding furniture on top. And sometimes there's a lot of remodeling, sometimes a little. So it it is a sliding scale. It's not exact. You have to play with it a bit, which is why I work with clients on this, why I work with designers on this. And I'm like, okay, let's look at the numbers. Let's get you to a place where you can ask for these numbers and you can educate the client in. I never said defend. I never said explain. I don't want you doing either one of those things. They're not empowering. You educate into the value, okay? Really, really important. So this works very, very well. And again, what I love about square footage is a small change has a big impact on the bottom line. And then the way you're going to get this is if it's strictly your design fee, you get 50% up front to launch and 50% before presentation. Before, before, before. I cannot stress that enough. Before presentation. And then your procurement management can be invoiced with every furnishings invoice. Okay? You need to be paid in full for services and product before installation, never after. I have designers I'm coaching right now. It's a wonderful firm, very talented, upstate New York. They have a boatload of business. It's incredible how busy they are. And they are having this very issue because post-Melissa, not a problem. Pre-Melissa projects are a problem because they're being hung out on the final invoice. The clients aren't paying it. They have the money. It's not the issue. They're just slowed down. Two months, three months, six months. In one case, we've sent an attorney out. That's not fun. You have no leverage once it's loaded. Once the house is complete, there's no leverage. You have to be very careful about this, okay? So flat fixed fee, Lindsay. Oh, love Lindsay's story. It's so much fun. Um, Lindsay came to my Go Beyond event. I have a Go Beyond intensive that I run twice a year. And Lindsay came to that and she got home and she had a client. The shot was going to be ideal and she was all excited and it unraveled completely. And she didn't even get to the rates part. Just unraveled and she was a little disappointed. But she hung in there and about two months later, I got a text from her saying, flat fee, 66K. I'm like, whoa, awesome. And then about a month after that, I got another one saying 93K. So... I, I love results like this. I really do. You don't give up when the going gets tough. You don't give up because you got to know from a client. You keep going. You go, oh, you know what? Next. Next. It's kind of like dating. If anybody's dating in this room, 
I know that next feeling. <laughs> so no hourly tracking, reclaim 20 hours for creative design and manage cash flow with ease and confidence. That's super cool. And if you notice, these designers are all over the country. I coach all over the country. This isn't like in one part of the country. It works everywhere. Super fun. Okay, so this is the simplest to sell by far and away. You define your deliverables precisely as you do with all of these. You make it a PIF. Anybody know what a PIF is? Pay in full. Pay in full. I love PIFs. PIFs are fabulous. And it's best on predictable projects with clients that you know. Where things will monkey up on you is when you don't know a client well. I had a doctor come after me at one point and say, hey, Melissa, I'm really excited about, want to work with you. You're going to be a present to my bride. I'm like, oh, that's so romantic. I got completely swept up in the moment. And so I prepared an agreement for him and he signed it and he sent me money and it was wonderful. And then I met her. Now she was a doctor too. She is a real different doctor. <laughs> now they are both dear friends of mine today. I have dinner with them whenever I'm in Atlanta, but He's super laid back and easygoing and Mr. Positivity. And she is all about managing the minutia and the details and micromanaging and anxious. And oh my goodness. And they're perfectly matched because they're opposites have attracted. And boy, if I'd known that before, I would have tripled my fee. <laughs> so you got to be careful on that front. You better pay close attention to client behavior and you better know both decision makers. I couldn't know her because I was a surprise. I love being a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get swept up in the romance. Um, <laughs> it's really silly. So hourly with a multiplier. Um, this is more of a check balance thing. By the way, those of you that are less than $200 an hour in this room, uh, I automatically bring you to $200 an hour. It's just easier to do math that way. So I recommend just move up to $200 an hour or three. Three is good too. Um, I take your design time times, you know, uh, of however many hours times an hourly rate times 1.5. Now, why did I pick 1.5? Because I know you're undervaluing by at least that much. If the client you think is going to be a PETA, do you know what a PETA is? Pain in the, or a pin. Some people say, oh, Melissa, you should say it's a pin, pain in the neck. I'm like, no, no, I should not. <laughs> okay. So then, then they get a PETA fee. They're 1.75. Now, the only problem with this the only problem with this is if they ask you for a basis of the fee, you're going to be stuck, aren't you? Because you can't say, well, I took the hours times 1.5. <laughs> That's not going to work. So what we'll normally do is if we use this, we'll put it against square footage. We'll pull the square footage in there. We'll do that math and we'll go, okay, we're going to go with that. Okay. But I like to share this because I want you to understand the gap between where you are now and where you need to be. All right. Um, furnishings only. This is a client of mine, um, Robin in Boston, and she got um, a client founder and said, well, I've given my house to my daughter and I'm going to have you do that one. And then I want you to redo my home too. I was like, that's a sweet deal. So she got a twofer. You always want a twofer when you can get them. And so um, Robin, this was her first time out of the gate with flat fees. She was used to hourly. She was super uncomfortable. Lots of limiting beliefs coming up for her. And she made it the um, hours times the 1.5 times the 200. Robin's rate is lower, but I adjusted it and she went with it. So she got the 69K and it was just super easy. The woman said, oh yeah, 69K, no problem. Boom, here you go. And th this is the gap that you're having. You're thinking 69K, but you know, Robin thought the same way, but she, your clients aren't where you are. They're way out here ahead of you. Allow them to invest at their level. Don't bring them back to your level. It's not a good idea. Okay. Um, so this is starting point for her on this one. And then she'll do the daughter's one and that'll be a whole different fee and she'll be much more comfortable and it might even be more. We don't know. So combination rate. Nan is one of my clients down in Naples. She was the gal I just mentioned. I went down and hung out for four days with her. Super fun. Um, I'm finding it so much fun because in design, I have a lot of clients that are lifers for me that are lifetime friends and I see them and we connect and now I get to do it with my designers. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Um, her fees are lower because her minimum project investment is 350K. So she's dealing at a top end of the market. And when you, as you go up, your fees will often come down a wee bit in percentages because um, you're still making just as much money, but you, the, the high, high numbers less so. 
So these are numbers she's comfortable with. I have pushed, coached, cajoled, begged, pleaded, encouraged her to increase these. <laughs> she still increased her bottom line revenues by 25%. So super happy. She's got a wonderful firm of incredibly talented designers. Um, and it's streamlined her invoicing. It reclaimed time from hourly tracking. And it's really given her back her life. That makes a huge difference, given her back her life. So fixed fee plus the 25 to 60%. Now, I know that's a huge range, but I, honest to goodness, I have a designer up in Pennsylvania, 60% on top of designer net. She gets it all day long. No problem at all. Please don't go below 25%. And that feels low to me. Please don't. I have designers who do 15%. I'm like, no, 15% is like a handling fee. It's not, it's not where you're going to make money. Um, so the design fee includes, this is what your design fee includes. All plans, drawings, conceptual sketches, and renderings, all mood boards and presentations, all project sourcing, but not the actual procurement. Not the actual procurement. Finish and fix your selections throughout and furniture, rug, lighting, and everything else. Now, here's really important. This is your procurement management fee. It is not a markup. It is not a markup. It is not a markup because it covers all of this. So if your client pushes back on what they perceive to be a markup, first of all, you have to put the word management in there. Now, you can call it a purchasing management fee, procurement management fee, product management fee. But that word management has to be in there. It's critically important. I like to take this list and number them. And I like to include what I don't have on top of there, which is generate the purchase orders. Because that's kind of a pain in the behind, don't you think? So you have 10 elements here, I think. I can't count this morning. Maybe nine. 10, 10 if I add that in there. And that's a nice long list of things that they can't do. So if a client ever does that silly nonsense where they say, well, we can, we can buy our own product or you can have it shipped straight to us. I'm like, really? Do you have a loading dock? Do you have a loading dock that an 18 wheeler can pull up to? Do you have a full-time receiver? Do you know what a receiver is? A trained receiver that can inspect the goods. And if there's a problem, they'll take care of them. And they'll be like, what? No. I'm like, well, I guess we'll be doing that for you then. <laughs> okay. I mean, they can be so goofy. They really can. Um, it, <sighs> So buy the room. I want to share this with you. So room type plus fixed fee, des fixed design fee and procurement management fee. So a living room, forty-seven fifty to seventy-two fifty, depends on the size and complexity of the living room. Dining room, forty-seven fifty to sixty-two fifty. Primary bedroom, fifty-seven fifty to seventy-two fifty. Now these are ranges, not limits. I have a retailer out of Westchester, New York, who is making a bunch of changes in her business. But when we worked together, she was not charging a design fee at all. She was just making retail. And I said, no, 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 no. That's not enough. So she was able to get it to 10K a room in some projects, which I loved hearing. There is no way you can give me a number that I think is going to be too high. It's not possible. You're worth it. The transformation you're delivering, the 15 years and 20 years of joy and delight for your client is worth it. Okay, powder bath, laundry room. I covered all of these. Now, I missed a couple of rooms here, didn't I? Ooh, this is a shocker. I've been doing some coaching with NKBA members. And holy bananas, they are vastly undervalued too. It is shocking. The prevailing rate in the industry is 10 to 15%. I don't like prevailing rates. I think that's too low. That's not appropriate. If I'm going to do somebody's kitchen, I'm not going to do it with prevailing rate. I'm going to do it with 15 to 20% instead. So if there's a 150K kitchen at 22,500 minimum design fee, not 7,500, that's the bath. That's the bath. Now, that's a primary bath. You know, that's not a guest bath. That's not a Jack and Jill. That's not a powder bath. But still, it, it's just they're, they're giving themselves away, and it breaks my heart. It absolutely breaks my heart. I have a couple of them that I coach full time, and it's like, whew. Wow, to see the difference and, and to keep educating them into their value, into their value, into their value, because they get all that back out when the house sells. And the designer's not getting royalties. You're not getting royalties. Once you're getting royalties, if you think we can change the industry, let's do it. But I'll need your help, okay? So 
This is New Build and Furnishings. Emily Merrick, she's out in Arizona with me and a uh, 46K fee on a 2,300 square foot. I love what Emily said in her testimony. She said, until I met Melissa, I wasn't making any money. I was like, oh, yeah. And then she's already making a lot of money, a lot of money. So she is quite dynamic. Um, she's in control, reclaimed hours from time tracking, and eliminated client questions. Oh, man. Clients start looking at this invoicing. Out. Seven hours for a sofa. They don't understand that you've had to comb through not just the internet, but you've been on the phone with your vendors and you've probably gone and sat tested and then you had the fabric and the, and they're going to be living with it for the next 15, 20 years. And I'm like, really? You want me to do it in seven minutes? Oh, okay. I'll just go to Wayfair and pick something out. Scary. Okay. So do you feel like if you just leapt into everything I just taught you, you would feel more in control, more at ease, more confident, more profitable? Yes. Okay. So this is how you can do that. Along with working with me personally, I have an event coming up the end of September in Scottsdale, which is much sunnier and drier than we are here today. And along with my private coaching, which I definitely do on a full-time basis, I am full-time coach at this point in time. Um, this is coming up and I'm going to ask Miss Elizabeth, can you stand up for a second, please? If you all are curious, Elizabeth, is right here. Increase your revenue by 500% working with me privately. <laughs> I did not. I, I had no idea she was coming. I had no idea she was coming. Um, I'm going to point out Bethany, lovely redhead here, is not on this, but she is another fabulous client of mine with insane results. Bethany's first project out of the gate started at 250, went to 400. Yes. So proud of you for that. So proud of you for that. So I love what I do for a living. It, there's nothing more exciting to me than this. I don't miss doing design. You guys do that. I live vicariously through those opportunities, through those adventures, through those challenges, through those nitpicky clients. <laughs> and I'm here to help you solve all of that. I really am. I just love this. It's so much fun for me. So I'm going to trust that you learn these things, how to truly value design. Do you feel more valuable now? Yeah? Do you understand the hats? Yeah? We making sense here? The five phrases, you got those. And for those of you that, that put your card in the jar, you will get the slides. I'm going to send them out to you. In addition to the success guide is on your postcards. You have that. Okay? Really important. Um, and then detail your design deliverables. Are we clear on design deliverables? Because I don't want to be leaving not understanding design deliverables. It's not your scope of work. Your scope of work is different. Your scope of work is different. And scope of work is still very important, but scope of work is by the room, your recommendations. And then the deliverables are the vehicle to take that scope and turn it into reality. And then the four proven formulas. I think, actually think we did five. Hmm. I always try to over-deliver. Seems to work well. Okay. So I am tomorrow, I'm at Card Kadaris in Broad Hall. I'm doing the ultimate sourcing system. If you're losing money in sourcing and you don't want to hire a team, I got a way you can build a team. You don't have to hire or manage anybody. So you're going to want to be there for that. And then Monday, I'm Playground for Profit, marketing that gets you clients while you're having fun. And it's more than wine tastings. <laughs> uh, and then Tuesday is how to build a team and avoid burnout. Anybody here feeling burned out? Bit burned out? Yeah? Okay, so hopefully I'll get to see some of you in additional presentations. Please come find me. Follow me on social. Reach out to me. Tell me you were here. You've also got a whole booklet of opportunities to work with me and a way to schedule a designer discovery call because you guys are doing design discovery. I'm doing designer discovery. All right. That's how I start everything. And that's how you want to start everything. So those of you that want to join me further, we're going to move over to the meetup in the room next door. And if you have questions, bring them up to me.